going on, everybody? It is Tuesday, May 15th, and uh, just like we told you yesterday, obviously Andrew Heaney, Jake Odorizzi, Wade LeBlanc, and Mike Fires were going to be the four best scoring pitchers on DraftKings. You don't get that sort of information everywhere. Oh, wait. No, we didn't say that. We probably had none of those guys. We thought they all sucked. Uh, Jake, how'd your night go? <laughs> My night was okay, despite all the the studs going off, like you said, like Heaney and the little Blancs and Odorizzi. Um, got some good hitting uh, good hitting in AT&T. My boy Scott Shebler, my home run call. <laughs> he donged in the worst park in the MLB for hitting, so that was fun. Uh, also put me in the money. So NHL went well as well. So good night all around. Um, hope you guys skated by and got in the cash last night because you didn't really need that much. Pitching was flipped upside down pretty much. Yeah. Uh, I got basically nothing right yesterday from a pitching perspective, although McCullers was good, so that that does make me happy. But uh, you know, I didn't have nearly enough of all of those other – uh, morons at the top that clearly I wasn't going to roster. Kind of a bummer. Um, I don't like it when guys like Wade LeBlanc make me look stupid. <laughs> but that's baseball for you. Like That stuff's going to happen so often. And it's so disconcerting. But what are you going to do? On to the next one. 14 yeah. games tonight. You ready to dive in? Let's do it. Orioles and Phillies. The first one we've got up here is a big one. And we got a lot to talk about. Orioles 4.6 run implied total. Phillies 5.1. It's a 55% chance to win for the Phillies. Andrew Kashner going for Baltimore. Nick Pavetta going for Philly. Um, I'm not really looking at either of the pitchers here, but the main takeaway from this game is it might not happen. A ton of rain looking like it's just going to be hovering over Baltimore from the 6 o'clock until at least 11 o'clock window. Um... This one you're going to have to pay attention to. One, because it matters. Uh, the Phillies look like, to me, the best stack of the day. And two, you know, we might not be able to see any of this game. So what are you thinking here for Philly? Uh, let's let's ignore the weather for right now. Yeah, okay, so just ignoring weather, because I do have interest in the Phillies hitters, um, a few of them. I don't know if I'll get to the full stack, but... I like Hoskins and Santana, and Nick Williams is super cheap on DK. Uh, Cesar Hernandez leading off. So I could actually probably get to a full stack now that I'm naming off all these guys. But yeah. uh, I don't know if it's my favorite stack of the night. I, I do like the idea of stacking against Andrew Kashner. Um, and then Pavetta I like. So I'm hoping the weather is makes it so he's at least playable. And he's going to be low-owned, I think, because of this Baltimore run total. He's been really, really good against righties this year, and the Orioles have been really bad against right-handed pitching. 24% K rate, bottom five in walks, bottom five in hard hit percentage. So it's just a matchup that I want to keep attacking, and Pavetta's been awesome against right-handed hitters, and the Orioles have a bunch of them. So kind of bummed that the weather doesn't look great for this game. I know you're really on the hitting, so you go ahead and tell me all the Phillies that you want. Yeah, uh... I love trying to get in against Andrew Kashner. Um, just not good. Uh, it doesn't matter which hand. So you get the natural <clears throat> lefty-righty matchups with Hernandez, Odubel Herrera, Carlos Santana, Nick Williams. Like All that looks great to me. Uh, price points are perfect. And then um, you get the benefit of Citizens Bank Park being the best park for right-handed power. Uh, at least they were last year. So all fair... Reese Hoskins, you know, Franco. Um, I like all those guys from the right side. Althair only 2700 on FanDuel is just an absolutely crazy price for him today. Uh, Reese Hoskins, spotlight hitter. Uh, I think he's got a, an excellent shot at a home run if this game actually goes through. Even even like Kingery in the 8-hole, 2300 for a shortstop on FanDuel or 3500 on DK, dual eligibility. Um, I love the Phillies. If somehow like this becomes a situation where there's not going to be that much rain or like it, we know that that game's going to happen, the Phillies will be without question my most popular stack. And that's all basically because Andrew Kashner sucks. 
Yeah, he's not good. Um, he and you know last year he was a little bit frustrating to stack against because he was limiting hard contact. I'm not really seeing the same from him this year. So go ahead and stack against Andrew Kashner. It's I mean as long as he's giving up hard contact and not striking anybody out, like guys are going to be putting the ball in play. Um, and then like Santana and Cesar Hernandez don't really strike out that much as it stands. Um, so those would probably be my two favorites. Hoskins is a really nice play for 4,400, even righty righty. Uh, he can hit anyone. So I like the Phillies a little bit lower on them than you are, but definitely one of the top five stacks for me tonight for sure. Uh, Kashner has given up a home run in every game except for one, at least one home run. He also has a game with two and a game with three. So, dude's just giving up dongs. Yeah. Like, with regularity. It would shock me if this game happened and uh, someone didn't get at least one off of him. Uh, I would hope for more just because of the way the Phillies are set up for it. Uh, they do have some lefty pop, but a lot of it is righty pop, and that park is perfect for it. Uh, I just I can't get enough of the Phillies. They check off all the boxes for me. As long as mm -hmm. Mother Nature doesn't screw me, I'll have a ton of Phillies. That's fair. Uh, and then from the Orioles side, I'm good. <laughs> Chris Davis, yeah, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, I, I don't want to target righties against Pavetta no. um, at all, really. And then these lefties are all near the bottom of the order. So, they, I mean, I don't know if Jace Peterson is going to play or it's going to be Cisco. Uh, Pedro Alvarez, but I'm not playing anyone against Pavetta. I do have respect for him. Um, he's just been like 32% K rate against righties, 19% hard contact, uh, 246 XFIP against righties. So I'm hoping the Orioles just stack up all these righties and Pavetta can mow them down. Yeah, but I don't, I don't we'll have see. too much interest in the Orioles. Yeah. And I won't really get to Pavetta. Um, he's just sort of in the middle ground of everything for me on FanDuel. And then on DK, you I mean, I could see him probably being in like one of my 20 lines. Uh, that'll be that'll be it, though, really. Uh, I just like a couple other guys significantly more. Uh, Alrighty. Pirates and White Sox. What, what, did you want to say another no, thing? No, no. I was saying let's move. I was saying let's go to the next game. Perfect. That's what I was doing. <laughs> Uh, Pirates and White Sox. Pirates, 4.8 round implied total. White Sox, 4.1. It's a 58% chance to win for the Pirates. Trevor Williams going for Pittsburgh. Ronaldo Lopez going for Chicago. Uh, maybe a little bit of rain early, but it shouldn't be anything that we have to worry about, so we can talk legit about this game. And uh, I can quickly get that out of the way, because I don't really like anything here. Uh, I guess... Maybe a mini Pirates hitter stack, but other than that, this game's not really on my radar. Yeah, me either. Like, for a total, for having like a near five run total for the Pirates, I don't really like many of their hitters. I mean, you could go with Polanco as a one off, but I'm not looking to really stack um, any of these Pirates. And then same with the White Sox. Even though Trevor Williams isn't anything special, uh, if Mancada's back, are you seeing that he's going to be back or yeah, he's possibility? To be back today. Then, yeah, then I like Moncada leading off, but that's about it. So just a bat or two on each side. And outside of that, the pitching doesn't really exist to me, and this game doesn't really exist to me outside of those two guys. Sure. Uh, I have to point out Adam Frazier on FanDuel. He's only 2,100. If he's leading off in a game with a 4.8 run implied total, I think he'll, he'll be relatively popular today. As far as, like, someone in a one-off in a random situation, I could see uh, Frazier having a little bit more ownership just because of that spot and price point on FanDuel. Um, yeah, no, that, that's a good catch. He's 28 on DraftKings. Anyone leading off for 2,800 with the platoon split or the platoon advantage, like, you got to at least consider them. Yeah. So. A spe and with the four, like if you know the Pirates had a three point seven run implied total, is one thing, but four point eight is pretty sizable for this slate. So you you have to look at him at least a little bit as a guy that can return value. And then uh, like Josh Bell uh, is only thirty one hundred on Fanduel. He's another guy that like I can get to Frazier, Polanco, Marte, and Bell, but I don't really have any alternatives after that. So the amount of lines that I'll have with Pittsburgh are relatively limited. Because I only have really four guys that I like on fans. Not a lot of rotational guys there. 
and it won't get to like they won't be the three man part of a stack if Trevor Williams is there for me because I'm not going to roster Trevor Williams so there's just not a lot of uh, pirates yeah no Trevor Williams for me I think I played him on like the three game slate last start and <laughs> that was enough Trevor Williams exposure for the year I think yeah alrighty Nats and Yankees Nats 4.3 run implied total Yankees 4.5 uh, it's a 52% chance to win for the Yanks. Gio Gonzalez going for Washington. Masahiro Tanaka going for New York. Um, I guess I like Tanaka here a little bit, particularly on DK where he's only 8,400. Uh, Gio, while I normally am targeting Gio, uh, today is not going to be that day. Uh, I'm not a big fan of Gio here. Uh, I don't even really love Tanaka all that much on FanDuel, but I think... I like Tanaka quite a bit on uh, on DK. Where are you standing on these guys? Yeah, I mean, if I have to choose one, it's Tanaka. He's the favorite. I think he's got a lot more upside just game to game when he's got his stuff working. Um, I could see him having a good start here, but I've got the Nationals as one of the worst matchups in the MLB for right-handed pitching. Um, I mean, he certainly could overcome it, um, but I... I mean, $8,400 isn't a great enough price for me to take a chance here, I don't think. There's just, like, I'm really scared targeting against Harper and Rendon and Matt Adams, the way he's hitting. Kendrick's been hitting really well. So I think it's just a little bit too tough of a matchup for Tanaka. Um, if I was MMEing, I would for sure have a little bit of exposure because I think he's going to be really low-owned. But for my single lineup, um, I'm probably going to pass. Yeah, and you know what? Probably not going to matter. Uh, tons of rain in the forecast in uh, in Washington. No surprise there. Relatively close in proximity to Baltimore. Uh, tons of rain right through the wheelhouse of this game. Uh, it's going to be a wet one. Uh, Tanaka and Geo are not guys that I would recommend. Um, there's no guarantee that Tanaka sees a full run here. Uh, they could easily have like a sizable rain delay that gets him yanked in two innings or something like that. So uh, if weather holds right now, this is not a game where I will have any of the pitching. My only focus would probably be on a little bit of Nats bats. Uh, Harper, 4,500 on FanDuel, 5,300 on DK. Uh, I don't mind using him as a one-off in this scenario if we think the game's going to happen. Um and then I'd be okay with a little bit of Trey Turner, but I know you're not a huge Trey Turner guy. Um, I mean, I don't mind Trey Turner. I like him a lot better when the steel matchup's going to be really good. Um, so I don't know how good Tanaka is at holding on runners, but, I mean, he, he could steal on pretty much anyone. So if you want to play Trey Turner for 4500 I don't think that's a bad play if, if the game looks like it's going to go. Um because he's always got the upside to steal like two bases on a single. So sure, yeah. And then Yankees, uh, I like Stanton as a one-off, and that's it. Um, yeah. So just the three guys that I always mention against lefties: Stan, uh, Stanton, Sanchez, and Aaron Judge. Okay. I like Judge a little bit more on uh, DK, <laughs> but Stanton mm -hmm. is like a, a no-brainer for me. I'd be happy to have him. Yeah, love that. All righty. Marlins and Dodgers. Marlins, 3.3 run implied total. Dodgers, 4.3. It's a 60% chance to win for the Dodgers. Uh, Wee and Chen going for Miami. Alex Wood going for LA. Uh, I like Wood. Uh, <laughs> that, I wish I wouldn't have shouted that out. Oh, yeah. Um, he looks pretty good on FanDuel. I like the price point, 8,600. Matchup's nice. Um, he's a guy that I'll have... Uh, some solid exposure to. I prob I would guess that I'll be higher than the field on Wood. And then on DK, um, he's kind of in a weird spot to me. I would imagine I wouldn't get to a ton of Alex Wood. Uh, I like Syndergaard more and Eduardo Rodriguez more, and they bookend him. So while I like him and he's in a good spot, uh, I like him quite a bit more on FanDuel, especially with the, the pretty sizable chance of picking up a win. Yeah, I, I like Wood a bunch too. Um, yeah. Ton of yeah, ton of chases, thirty-seven percent O swing percentage this year. That's amongst the league lead. Uh, swinging strike rate looks pretty decent, near twelve. Uh, the Marlins we know are not a good team, and I have them being a pretty good matchup. 
against righties. Now, it's probably not as good, or I'm sorry, against lefties. It's probably not as good because now they have Prado and Real Muto back, and uh, Brian Anderson can hit lefties very well. So I'm not as high on Wood as I would have been like a couple weeks ago, but I think he's certainly playable for 10K. You're right, though. I do prefer Cindergaard, assuming the weather looks fine there. So it's going to be tough for me to, to actually get to playing him with one lineup. Yeah, it's just in a weird salary spot. Mm-hmm. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Bats-wise, I'm not looking at any Marlins, and uh, I think that the Dodgers are probably like a decent low-owned stack today. Uh, I think Chris Taylor looks pretty nice. Um, Kike Hernandez looks nice. Justin Turner, if he's back, I'm a little yes. nervous about. I'm a little nervous about Turner, though. Coming back What's with that? a wrist injury... Um, I feel like I want to see that first, but it's a great matchup. Hitting third, platoon advantage. It's only three thousand on Fanduel. Um, I don't mind a, a Dodger stack. Uh, I'll have oh, a little yeah. bit of it. Yeah, I like the Dodger stack a ton, uh, and and it's mostly well, not mostly, but that's a big boost in your lineup. Justin Turner, like for years, it was um, he was a reverse splits hitter. Or whatever, he hit righties better. Last year, that sort of corrected. Last couple years, um, we and Chen has got home run problems. Six in his three starts this year. Um, the, okay, he gave up three in his last one. That was uh, the Wrigley win game. That went nuts, so I'm not really holding that one against him too much. But I love Turner, Kemp, Grandal, Kike Hernandez, Chris Taylor. Like the top five for the Dodgers. I like them all. Yeah. It's good weather here. 84 degrees. Um, man, Dodgers one of my favorite stacks. and I agree. I think they're going to be lower owned than they should be just because of that run total. Yeah, I, I can't see them having too much ownership at all. Um, so that makes me sort of happy. I'd be happy to be like double the field on a low owned Dodger stack tonight. Yeah. Um, do we have anything else here? I don't think so. A, a literally zero part of... Uh, the Marlins. Yeah, I mean, if Brian Anderson was like minimum salary, I would take a chance there. Um, <laughs> he just hits the ball really hard against lefties, but him or Castro, like those are two guys I, I don't mind against lefties, but I'm not going here. I have respect for Alex Wood. Um, I don't think you need to get that cute. Agreed. Alrighty, Mets and Blue Jays. Mets. 4.1 run implied total. Blue Jays, 3.2. 61% chance to win for the Mets. Um, Noah Syndergaard going for New York. Jaime Garcia going for Toronto. Uh, Syndergaard's my dude. He's the, my favorite pitcher of the slate. Um, he's the guy that I'll end up with the most of. I just, I'm, I'm in for Syndergaard. Uh, weather looks like it should be fine in New York, so I'm not super concerned there. Implied total for the Blue Jays of 3.2 is the lowest on the slate, so uh, I'm, I'm in for I'm in for as much Syndergaard as I can get. I think that he'll be pretty popular on both sites, particularly on DK, where uh, Garrett Cole is $3,100 more expensive. Yeah, yeah, that's a tough sell for me. So uh, I love Syndergaard today. I do too. It's hard not to. I mean, he's going to be the chalk pitcher on DK, assuming the weather is okay. And you, you've got the weather being fine for this game. It, by game I, time. I don't see any concerns with with running out Syndergaard today. Okay, sweet. So he's going to be the chalk. I think he's probably the best point per dollar pitcher. He's going to get a handful of righties here, which is always good. The Blue Jays strike out 24% of the time against right-handed pitching. Syndergaard strikes out right-handed bats at almost 30% this year. Um, and then the good thing, I'm just like looking at like game logs and like season counting stats, which you probably shouldn't, but um, like stolen bases are not the Blue Jays thing, which Syndergaard really, really struggles with holding on runners. And just going like through their top five, Granderson, Donaldson, Solarte, Hernandez, and Smoke. The only guy that's stolen a base this year is Teoscar Hernandez, and he has like two. So that's a yeah, that's a big boost for Syndergaard's value. Like 
he gets in trouble with like whatever he'll like walk a guy and then he'll end up on third two pitches later because he just cannot hold runners and I don't think that's going to be a big concern for him here as long as the Blue Jays run out a somewhat normal lineup so I love Syndergaard same uh i don't really have anything else to add he's really good and this is a really great matchup for him do you have any interest in any of the mets bats i think you can get to some uh stacks for the mets i mean yeah so cespedes and estrubal cabrera um you can throw in wilmer flores for 3k on on draft kings so two three four i have a little bit of interest in what about you uh i would agree with that assessment on dk as Drupal Cabrera has the same price on FanDuel as he does on DraftKings, so he doesn't look like the best option in the world on FanDuel. No. Uh, if you need Mesoraco as a catcher on DK, like I don't mind spending 2600 as part of a four-man stack here. Um, that's probably the extent of it. I guess Ligaris as well. So you know, anybody in the first four... I don't want Bruce, basically, so... The first four plus Masarocco, if you need a catcher, is fine with me. Yeah, I don't mind that. That's, I don't have anything else. Yeah. yeah, I don't. It's it's an unsexy game. It's just basically like play Syndergaard. Yeah. Which is not some sort of uh, amazing take. Only only the hottest takes here at Osmo.com. That's what you pay for, right? To know that you should play uh, the second most expensive FanDuel pitcher. <laughs> exactly. Anyway. <laughs> We're the worst. Tigers and Indians. Tigers, 4.3 run implied total. Indians, 5. It's a 57% chance to win for the Indians. Uh, Francisco Liriano going for Detroit. Josh Tomlin going for Cleveland. Is this his first start? Because I feel like it's the first time I've said his name all year. Oh, no. He's... He started a couple times. At least. I mean, right? He's... I, I'm now already, you're making like, me he rethink that. Easily been hurt. Now he's got six starts. I yeah, honestly, I was gonna say I, I feel like I've stacked against him a bunch this year. I don't feel like I've ever said his name. I'm sure we could go back and look at all these things and all have said it, all five of those days. But I feel like he maybe he only plays on Saturdays or something. Dude, no, he. So I I knew he played because he has been awful, like one of the worst pitchers in the league type of level right now. Like he's just getting pounded every start. Yeah, so. he played on. Uh, I feel like he plays in, like, the day games on days where we do shows or something because I just don't feel like I've ever talked about him. Well, Not that the, it's important. The Indians had those funky 6 Eastern starts that were off the slate, too, so maybe we've just yeah. gotten some bad luck. Um, anyway, I'm not playing Liriano or Josh Tomlin. This is a bats game, uh, and much like yesterday, I'm going to be on a boatload of Indians. Uh, hopefully it goes better than it did yesterday. But um, I'm in for one through nine in the Indians lineup. Yeah, and um, that's on both sides here. So that's like on both Tom, sides. Okay, because I've got no Tigers. I mean, that's how bad I think Tomlin is. He's like Chris Tillman level almost. He's he's very very bad, or at least he has been this year. So if Castellanos is back in the lineup for the Tigers, I love that for four thousand. Um, even considering Victor Martinez for 3,100, James McCann for 3,100, Hicks dual position eligibility for 3,400, Jacoby Jones has big power. Tomlin's just not missing any bats really, and then when he gets hit, he's just getting crushed. So it's a good combination of things when you're looking for hitters. Um, I like Matuk if he's leading off. I don't even know who Pete Kozma is. I've seen his name a few times. Oh, he's um, like a He's been in the league for a while. I know, I know. I just never, I never am looking to really stack Cardinals up Tigers, but yeah, yeah. I he's been in the league for a while, man. He's been 2011, oh. man. I probably sound dumb, um, but anyways, he's only ever it, had one year where he like played a bunch. The rest is all like 100 okay. or played appearances or less. Man, 30 years old. Okay. With the, I remember that 2013 year with the Cardinals, and he was fucking atrocious. 217, well, 275, 273 was his slash line at 450 plate appearances. Okay, so not not great, but twenty six hundred dollars against Josh Tomlin. Mike, I'll I'll target all these Tigers. I think they'll be pretty low owned because there's not a lot of big names. Castellanos will get ownership if he's in the lineup. Um, so yeah, I I just like the idea of targeting against Josh Tomlin, who I have as the worst pitcher on the slate. Um, 
and it's not particularly close. So you you can talk about uh, Indians bats. I, I like them too, but yeah, uh, Indians bats are like Pokemon, man. I want to catch them all. Uh, Lindor, <laughs> Brantley, Ramirez, Encarnacion, Geyer, Gomes, Eric Gonzalez, Greg Allen, Rajay Davis. I'm going to have every single one of those guys at some point in time in a lineup. Um, I just, like, I can't get enough of these guys. Uh, Lindor against the lefty, great. Ramirez against the lefty, obviously spectacular play. Edwin Encarnacion is a spotlight hitter today. Uh, I love Brandon Geyer. Uh, Jan Gomes, if you need a catcher on DraftKings, is going to be one of the better options. Greg Allen, only 2300 today. While he's hitting eighth, you know, it's just a bargain price. Same for Rajay Davis at the wraparound. Like, I'm going to get more than most of these guys uh, from, like, a total ownership perspective. No weather issues to, to worry about. Weather's really nice. Um, this is as good of a spot as you're going to find. Liriano is not the Liriano of old. Uh, I just I can't get enough. Brantley will probably be relatively low-owned because he's a lefty. Uh, I still want him. So. Yeah, I was just going to add in, like, don't forget about Brantley in there. Lefty, lefty, whatever. But you're assuming that the Tigers, or you're assuming that the Indians are going to knock out Liriano pretty early. Yeah. I think that's a pretty safe bet. Uh, I would be very, very surprised if Liriano goes deep into this game. So they may lead off Rajay Davis for 2,700. I know the Indians have done that a few times against lefties. So just something to keep an eye out for. Um, and then Jan Gomes, I love at catcher, 3,600 on DK. He's got a, you know, he's hitting lefties very well this year. Like he's striking out a ton against them, but that's not really something I'm worried about with Liriano. Um Geyer, I, I don't really like playing Geyer in general just because he gets pinch hit for so often. Um, so I'd be careful with him, but he is only 2,800 on DraftKings. But yeah, I, I love the Indians. I really like the Tigers. So this this game's pretty easy for me as well. Two guys that I like to stack against. Yeah, I'm with you, man. Uh, I just, I don't see the Tigers as much uh, outside of probably Castellanos and yeah. V-Mart. Cosmo's really, really, really bad. Uh, I can't imagine getting to him. Unless the Tigers total was like five and a half and this was some Coors game. This is a guy with five career home runs, a career ISO of .075, which is essentially like never getting an, uh, an extra base hit. <laughs> so no, Yeah, there's no wonder I've never heard of this guy. or I've never played him, that's for sure. I'm sure I've come across his name a couple times. but 110 of 148 hits have been singles. Slap hitter. There we go. Yeah, only he's hitting 217, so he's slapping that shit directly to a fielder. <laughs> nice. Anyway, not important. <clears throat> Get all the Indians you can. I said the same thing yesterday, and it didn't work, so I'm bound to be right if I say it over and over. Yeah. Red Sox and A's. Red Sox, 5.3 run implied total. A's, 4.0. 63% chance to win for the Sox. Eduardo Rodriguez going for Boston. Daniel Mengden going for Oakland. Uh, I love Eduardo Rodriguez. I say this just about every time. Uh, $7,800 price point on FanDuel is fantastic for a day like today. Uh, I'll have a decent amount of him. I'll almost assuredly be over the field. On DK, um, he's tricky to get to because of how much I like Syndergaard, but I would definitely have exposure to him. I think that you can go to like Eduardo Rodriguez and you Darvish and still be fine from a hitter perspective. We'll take a look at that at the end of this. But I like him. Uh, he's one of my top few pitchers. Probably third or fourth on FanDuel. Similar rank on uh, DK. Yeah. <clears throat> what did you say you have the weather for this game? looking like so it's really rough uh right okay. at the beginning of the game i could see this game starting a bit late maybe like an eight o'clock start or so okay. uh they should haven't they shouldn't have any problems getting it in it's just going to be about when they start so your only concern is going to be um a, a late start i don't see any problem having uh rodriguez or hitters in this game yeah i, I don't mind rodriguez on dk 9200 um, 
I'm never thrilled if he's going to be chalky, but I don't think he will be because of that price, because of how the slate kind of sets up. Um, and then, so I'm I'm fine with the Erod play. I don't know if I'll end up on him, but um, I think he's a, a solid play. Definitely has some upside here. Um, and then Mengden on the other side, I think he gets absolutely lit up here. So I was, I, I mean, I hope this game plays because I love the Red Sox. They have the highest total of the day, right? They do indeed. Yep, and I think they deserve it. Like, Red Sox are the best team in the MLB against righties all year. Mengden has over 40% hard contact against righties, a 164 whip. Um, not an easy out in this lineup from either side. So I don't see Mengden striking a bunch of guys out here. I think he gets pummeled. So I'm going one through six for the Red Sox. Um, I don't know. Are you, are you as high on the Red Sox as I am? I am not, but I want to be. <laughs> I was very surprised to see them come up as little as they did. Um, I expected to see them more in both of the crunches, but I didn't really get a ton of them yet. Uh, I think that'll change based on the weather. If I were to exclude Philly and you know the Yankees and the Nats, I think the Red Sox are going to naturally climb if those games are going to be games that I can't really go to. Yeah. Uh, I their prices are a bit better on DK, so that that's going to be a spot where I would end up with them a little bit more. Um, but on the surface, you know, with that implied total, I like the top five for sure, top six uh, into Devers, and I'm irrationally high on Jackie Bradley like every day. So if I were not looking at the rest of the slate, I would say that I like the Red Sox a ton. Uh, they didn't work out in my uh, grand math problem in the morning, but. I think that'll probably change closer to lock if we have uh, some weather issues. I, I wouldn't tell anybody that they're crazy to have the Red Sox in their lineup. It would make sense to me on paper. Yeah. Um, I, I just really love the Red Sox. I like targeting righties against Mengden. So Mookie Betts, JD, Hanley, Bogarts, um, and then like the lefties I'm fine with as well, Devers and, and Ben and Tendi. They're both priced reasonably on DK, so... I'm all over these Red Sox, but I think everyone's going to be. So it's not some hot take. It's not like some 5% stack is going to win you everything. They're going to definitely be chalky here. Oh, for sure. Uh, I, I think when all the weather is said and done, they'll be a relatively chalky play. Yeah. For as chalky as you can be on a 14 game slate, it's not like they're going to be like 35% owned or something, but guys like uh, Betts and Benintendi are going to be pretty high. Betts in particular. Yeah. That's all. That's all I got. Me too. This one, this one's going to bother me a lot, but we'll talk about it anyway. <sighs> okay. Braves and Cubs. Braves, 4.1 run implied total. Cubs, 4.6. It's a 55% chance to win for the Cubs. Uh, Fulty's going for the Braves. You Darvish is going for Chicago. I love Darvish here. Uh... Darvish is like my favorite guy of the slate if I don't have to worry about salary. Um, 7,700 on FanDuel, 7,800 on DraftKings. He'll absolutely hit my ownership caps uh, for the day. I'm going to, I would imagine, be higher than the field unless I'm just not thinking about it correctly. But I want as much you Darvish as I can get, <laughs> which pains me considering the Braves are... I think, but let me double check it. Still the the best team in the NL right now. Let me, uh, let me find out. So. Yes, they have the third re best record in baseball, just behind the Yankees and Red Sox. Um, but I like Darvish, and I want to have a, an absolute ton of Darvish. So, tell me your thoughts on you, Darvish. I want to know how crazy I am. Uh, I don't. Well. I'm not on Darvish. I mean, I get it. It's a good price for him on DK. Um, good price on FanDuel as well. He's got a decent chance for the win. Um, <clears throat> this Braves lineup is just really, really tough. Not one that I want to target against. I'm surprised you're going against the home team here, especially with how well they've been hitting. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I, I, I just don't see the strikeouts here. Like, And Freeman does strike out a little bit. But, like, 
you really going to plan on striking out Freddie Freeman a couple times? Um, Darvish's swing and miss stuff hasn't been that great this year. 9.4% swing strike rate out of 184 pitchers that qualify that have thrown 100 or more pitches. Uh, Darvish ranks 109th in whiffs per swing. So he's in the bottom half. Like He's just not missing the bats. And if you're not missing bats against this Braves team, um, I know what the strikeout numbers say for Darvish, but I think he's got a little bit of regression coming. So I'm I'm actually not on him here. Yeah, uh, I might be out on an island. I think you might be, but I don't like being on this particular island because it's going to require me to have an overabundance of you, Darvish, and for me to be cheering. I don't know simultaneously for and against myself. So I, I can't. Like, he had a rough start against the Braves a couple weeks ago, but. All, I, I can't get away from him. He, his raw projections are just too high for me to avoid him at this salary spot. Which reminds me, what was his salary the last time they played? Because I find that sort of interesting. We don't really talk about like salary trends all mm-hmm. that much. Um, so I want to see what he had. Computer is just dragging ass now. All right, on FanDuel, Darvish was 9,500 when they uh, when they played on April 13th. He's $1,800 cheaper than that. Yeah, I mean, it's certainly a discount, but the matchup sort of di- dictates that for me. So that's why I'm not on him. I'm going to try not to fall for the price. And then I like another guy that's priced right next to him on DK, so... Yeah, I I just I can't get enough there. I'm gonna, if I'm wrong, I'm wrong. I'm fine with the Braves winning this game and me being wrong, but I'm gonna have a ton of Darvish, uh, and I hope he's low owned because I'm willing to die on that hill. I think tonight. What do you think of Cubs bats? I'm not really crazy about them. I like Rizzo and Schwarber, uh, maybe Wilson Contreras, but he's really expensive on DK, 4300. So, I'm. Lukewarm on the Cubs bats, not stacking them against Fulte. Um, I don't know. Are you are you on a Cubs stack here? A uh, very minor Cubs stack. They look a little bit better on DK. I like Zobrist a lot. Uh, Twenty seven hundred on Fanduel, thirty seven hundred on DK with the dual eligibility. Um, to get that leading off is always is always really nice to me. I'd be fine with Rizzo and Schwarber. Um, and then, you know, Chris Bryant is obviously Chris Bryant. So I'll get to a little bit of Cubs stacks just sort of because of their positions. You know, because you can get Bryant and he kind of transcends matchup. Rizzo gets the lefty-righty first base matchup. Zobrist allows things to fit a little bit better. And then Wilson Contreras is always a decent option as a catcher. So the pieces just kind of fit together really well for a uh, a DraftKings stack. I don't like them all that much on FanDuel. I, I can't get there as easily. So I'll have a, a minor amount of exposure to the Cubs. I won't have any Braves. People are probably used to me saying that. Um, I mean, I don't mind Freeman but or Albies, but they're super expensive. So I'm, I'm sort of off hitting in this game as a whole. I can see myself playing a one-off, but that's about it. That's fair. Uh, it, I mean, everything is, to me is all wrapped up in Darvish. So, God, I'm gonna I'm gonna die there, aren't I? Yeah, I think you might. All right, we'll see. We'll see. Anyway, Twins and Cardinals. Twins four point six run implied total. Cardinals four point four. It's a fifty two percent chance to win. Uh, for the Twins, and before I keep talking. Uh, be prepared. Cubs Braves game uh, could have some weather. It's not the best. I don't think it'll matter too much from a starting pitcher perspective, but they might have trouble getting this one fully in. Uh, so something you want to keep in mind. Anyway, back to the Twins and Cardinals. Uh, Jose Barrios going for Minnesota. Jack Flaherty going for St. Louis. Um, I'm not looking at Flaherty at all. Uh, to me, Barrios is just a guy. Uh, he's in like a price point where. I would happily use him as like a second starter on DK. I probably wouldn't have him in more than a line or two. 
Um, I'm just not really on this game from a pitching perspective. I'm much more on it from a hitting perspective. Yeah, I, I mean, so I'm on the twin side. I'm on the twins onslaught really here. So I like Barrios. It's a really good price for him, 7,600. I think he's healthy. He's had a few rough starts in a row, but 25% hard contact is a very, very good number for the season. Uh, we're getting into a decent sample at this point, a couple months in. Um, and then the Cardinals are going to give him all these righties. Like he's going to have six righties to go against probably. Yeah. Um, obviously much, much better against right-handed hitting. Um, and then I think he gets a ton of run support. Uh, so Flaherty on the other side, certainly not playing him. Of all starting pitchers with at least 10 batted ball events this year against lefties, Flaherty is first in average exit velocity at 95.4 miles per hour. Uh, that's across the entire MLB for starting pitchers. So he's going to get a bunch of lefties here, seven, six lefties. Um, so I am all over Kepler, Escobar, Rosario, Logan Morrison, even Joe Maurer for 3,400. Some guy was was trolling us about Maurer yesterday in the live stream. Um, but I think he's a fine play. Like, he still has some power and doubles work, too, in a stack. So I, I like all these twins. I'm all over the twins tonight. I like both sides from a hitting perspective, but I've got more Cardinals than I do Twins, actually. Uh, I like Matt Carpenter a lot today, particularly as a spotlight hitter, oddly enough. Only 3,000 on FanDuel, getting the lefty-righty matchup, and then 3,500 on DK with the second base and third base eligibility. Uh, he's He makes for quite the Swiss Army knife tonight. Uh, I like those first four uh, probably actually first five guys for the Cardinals. I know it's a lot of righty-righty. Um, it's just more of a price play than anything else. And then for the Twins, I like Maurer. I like Kepler. Uh, Eduardo Rodriguez, or Eduardo Escobar, rather, is uh, probably a bit too expensive, but I'm fine with him as part of a stack. Um, I'm going to have both of these teams. Uh, I'll, I'll probably be heavier than the field for both, unless you think one of these will be like relatively chalky. I don't really see that too much. I mean, the Twins will get some ownership on DK because, like, Kepler is cheap and Morrison's pretty cheap and Maurer's cheap. Dozier is cheap enough for a Dozier's stack for me. Dozier's popular every day, man. Yeah. Um, so I don't think they'll be overly popular. They're not going to be, like, a top three on stack, I don't think. so. I'll probably have more than the field on the Twins and the Cardinals. It's, this, this game's all hitting for me. Barrios for me. Yeah, I'm not. Hold on, let's see what we have here. Okay, so Darvish and Barrios separated by two hundred dollars. We need to make some sort of uh, Darvish versus Barrios bet. We, I'm. We can do that today or um, on the live stream if you're in the chat. I should be around tonight for, for right. the live stream, so I'll chime in. I'll think <laughs> about it. We'll do something fun. Yeah. Go, Darvish. Twins homer. I'm not a Twins homer. I'm a Cubs fan. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> so I'm going to be cheering for Darvish. <laughs> I know. That should tell you I'm, I'm being unbiased. Yeah. Hey, that's why I'm stacking the Cubs against the Braves. I'm yeah. unbiased. Both going against our teams. Yeah. Some geniuses here. Royals and Rays. Royals, 4.8 run implied total. Rays, 4.2. It's a 56% chance to win for the Royals. Ian Kennedy going for Kansas City. Anthony Banda going for Tampa. Uh, not a game where I'm playing any pitching, although I guess if you wanted to use Ian Kennedy on DK as the second starter, I wouldn't like have the biggest problem in the world, but I'm not focusing on either of these guys, and I barely want any part of this game. Yeah, I'm not on this game really at all. Um, Jorge Soler crushes lefties. So if it is indeed banned starting, I don't see a line out for this game yet. Do you? Uh, it might have been a, a, <laughs> a bogus line, but there was one up at one of these generic books. Okay. Um, yeah, Bet Online had a line of uh, Kennedy being a slight favorite. Let's see what Fangrass has to say. Fangrass has their own uh, win probabilities. 
Mm. I was just wondering because do we know for sure that that band is going to start? No. Okay. Well, you, I, I mean, whatever, I don't. You, yeah, neither do I. I haven't seen any confirmation. So, if Banda starts, he's a lefty. Then Solaire is fine for me and Salvador Perez. But like, I I don't. I want to stack against Ian Kennedy, but I don't want to with the Rays. So I'm just sort of off this game in general. Uh, so. Based on the line that I had in here, we had Kennedy and the Royals as a 56% favorite. Fangraphs right now has the Rays as a 51% favorite. Interesting. So, so Banda must be decent, or they know something that we don't. Banda has 8.8 Ks per nine from Steamer, four walk rate, which is relatively high, and then uh, a 4.36 projected FIP. I'll pull up Banda now. Uh, he's like a, he's just a generic dude. Uh, average fastball, average curveball, average changeup, average splitter. Just a complete generic dude. He's had four starts this, or last year. Let's see what he did in those starts. Um, nothing of value. He started four times in late July, early August. Um, nothing of note. So I'm not really all that interested in Anthony Banda, and it's not really going to change anything if that line moves all that much. Yeah. So this game does not really appeal to me at all, outside of Solaire. Yeah, I'll, I'll barely have anything here. <clears throat> Solaire a little bit, and that's probably the extent of it. Yeah. Uh, Diamondbacks. And Brewers. D-backs, 4.4 run implied total. Brewers, 3.6. It's a 59% chance to win for the Diamondbacks. Zach Greinke going for Arizona. Julius Chassin going for Milwaukee. Um, I don't want any of Greinke at that price point. I'll probably get proven wrong. Um, I have Ryan Braun in this lineup, which I don't think that he should be. But we'll see. Um, he got scratched yesterday, right? Yeah. Which uh, I didn't notice. Uh, I, I didn't. Uh, I wasn't on my phone at that point in time. Didn't have the laptop open. Ate some <clears> dinner. And all of a sudden, I wanted to uh, lose my mind. Uh, yeah, I don't want any part of Grinky. Do you? Uh, I. He's a decent pivot from Syndergaard. I don't have a strong take on Grinky. I think he probably pitches pretty well here. Um, a lot of righties <clears throat> for the Brewers. So. I think Granky could have a really good start and makes for a good pivot. I do prefer Syndergaard over him, but if the ownership's going to be 50% to 10%, then you got to start thinking about um, going with the guy that's in a similar matchup, at least what I'm looking at. I would so, agree there. <clears throat> yeah, I mean, just as a tournament pivot, I'm not like locking in Granky into my lineup or anything. So, I don't know. Do you like Diamondbacks? Diamond bats, diamond backs, bats. Easy for More me. More than a little bit. Yeah. Uh, they'll be one of my three most popular stacks by far. Uh, love Peralta, Dyson, Descalso. Uh, I'm gonna keep running out Paul Goldschmidt till he figures it out. Uh, Steven Souza again, only 2,200 on Fanduel. He is gonna have big ownership like he did yesterday. Uh, Marte again, 2,200. I, you just I have to have parts of these guys. Um, I like a Diamondback stack a lot. They get you to sort of whatever you want to do. So if you're paying up for Syndergaard on FanDuel, you can go Diamondbacks plus whatever you want, and you'll be fine. So I will get to quite a bit of Diamondbacks. Do you share my uh, zest for Arizona hitters? I mean, I like a few of them. Peralta, Descalso, and then Goldschmidt. So if you're like mini stacking... I don't mind that, but I'm not super crazy about Diamondbacks hitters here. Yeah, well, it didn't work out for me last night. It made me look like a moron. However, <laughs> I think yesterday was a bit of an anomaly. If the first four hitter or first four pitchers are all going to be like crazily low owned dudes, you know, uh, it means that the day was weird. So yeah. I'm going to end up with a, an absolute ass ton of Diamondbacks, especially because absolutely no weather concerns in that game. It's played in the dome. Um, I won't struggle to get Diamondbacks. They'll probably only get more ownership as I lop off some of these teams that can't be a part of it. 
they'll go great with the Red Sox. Yeah. And I don't want any Brewers. Yeah, but it's definitely a good price for, for the Diamondbacks for having that run total. Let me be more specific. I only want Christian Yelich on FanDuel, where he's only $3,000. <laughs> yeah, I don't mind that at all if you're, if you're targeting against Cranky. Yeah. Uh, Yelich works as a one-off in that scenario for sure. Um, that's just that's, that's a price play. Angels and Astros. <laughs> Angels, 3.4 run implied total. Astros, 4.6. It is a 64% chance to win uh, for the Astros. Uh, I want to make sure I do this right. Is it Jaime Barria? Yep. Jaime Barria going for the Angels. Garrett Cole going for the Astros. I was trying to get the baseball reference as fast as I could for the official pronunciation. You know, I, this guy could have been just a regular white person, and I wouldn't have known. But they don't have the they don't have the first name pronunciation there. Just Baria. Anyway, Garrett Cole, uh, most expensive pitcher on both sites, eighteen hundred dollars more expensive than Syndergaard on FanDuel, twenty one hundred dollars more expensive than Grinky on DraftKings. I mean, obviously Cole looks like a really good option here. Um, I can't imagine paying up that freight. And knowing that I had Syndergaard right below that, uh, I'd, I'm assuming Cole's ownership will be relatively muted here. But I like him. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> if we're going by like raw points, I'd probably project him for near maybe the most raw points, just because of how good he's looked. He's just been unstoppable, striking out everyone, going deep. Uh, this Angels team is not one that I want to target against, especially not with the fourteen thousand dollar pitcher on DraftKings. Yeah, like they're they have the third fewest strikeouts against righties, uh, strikeout rate I should say. Their ISO is in the top five. Their hard hit percentage is in the top five. Like just not a lot of easy outs in this lineup. Otani's going to be in the lineup for the Angels. Um, I don't know. I think Cole is a fade for me. Which is weird. I mean, a low-owned Garrett Cole with how good he's looked is interesting, but I I can't do it for that price. All right, predict Garrett Cole's ownership on DraftKings tonight. Um, like twelve, fifteen percent. Okay. I don't think a lot of people are going to play him. Give me Syndergaard's. Oh, uh, like thirty-five, forty. Okay. Yeah, at that range then I would want like 10-ish percent of Garrett Cole. If Cole was lower than that and Syndergaard was somehow higher than that, I would lean more towards getting some Cole in as a pivot because I would say that he has the best chance of having the highest raw point total, but it's close. There are a couple of other options. Um, so it'll be nice to see that balance of whether or not you should look to an alternative pitcher. But I just think... That 13.9 price point is is really difficult to get to on DK without making some real concessions with your second starter. Yeah. If there was a super, super cheap guy that I was in love with, then I would be more willing to do it. But I'm kind of liking this mid-tier on DraftKings more than anything. I'm anxious to see Cole and Darvish because um, those, those would be the two guys that I would want to do if I could get there. I just don't know how feasible it's going to be from a stack perspective. Uh, are you looking at any hitters here? Because I'm not. Uh, maybe some Astros. Just they're going to put the ball in play against Baria, um, so they're not one of my favorite stacks. But I could see getting to gear like one through four. So Springer through Giriel. I think it's going to be pretty low owned. Um, I don't know. Just wanted to mention them because I might end up with an Astro in my lineups. In my lineup. Yeah, I I barely I, I've got like one or two percent of some of these guys as and that's about it. So they'll probably bump up a little bit as I lop off more teams, but I won't be uh, terribly exposed to Astros. Yeah. Mariners and Rangers. Uh, Mariners four point five run implied total. Rangers four point zero. It's a fifty five percent chance to win for the Mariners. Mike Leake going for Seattle. Mike Miner going for Texas. These guys might as well be the same person. They just throw with different arms. Um, I don't really care for either of them. Uh, I probably won't have either of them at all. 
it wouldn't shock me if one of the two popped up on... Well, by one of the two, I mean... It wouldn't shock me if Mike Miner popped up on DraftKings in one of my 20 lines, but that'd be it. I don't, I don't want to have either of these guys. I don't want any part of this game, really. I mean, I want hitters in this game. So I, I like Mike Miner um, in that I, I don't... It, like, he's not just, like, a guy auto-stack against, like Mike Leake is. Yeah. Um, so, Miner can miss some bats, but he does get hit hard by righties, and the Mariners don't strike out. They're going to put the ball in play. So, Hanniger and Cruz seem both underpriced by about 5000 to me against the lefty. Um, just not really understanding that price. Uh, I like Segura. Uh, Ryan Healy, Chris's boy. <laughs> I could get to a Mariner stack for sure. And then Leak has just been awful in terms of hard contact. So, uh, it's going to be tough for me to play some of these Rangers besides Gallo and Mazzara. But I like a Rangers stack, and this is cheap enough on DraftKings where you could fit in like Garrett Cole and maybe like Darvish like you like or Barrios like I like. So yeah. um, I'm definitely going to play around with this Rangers stack because it is so, so cheap and I love targeting against Mike Leake. Yeah, they just they didn't <laughs> pop up a ton for me on my first run through. Uh, on the surface, I would like to pro farm Azara Gallo, um, but I got no Mariners and a grand total of 5% Rangers. And when I mean 5%, that's the sum of each individual ownership. So, like, each guy is maybe in one or two lines on FanDuel. Um, I like it on paper. It's just probably not a direction I'll end up going with all that much gusto. The Mariners yeah. having the 4.5 run implied total is crazy. Rangers only a four run implied total against Mike Leake is... I don't know. It gives me pause. Yeah, I, why is it so low? Are the Rangers uh, bats that bad? Well, the Rangers are bad. Like, there's no doubt about that. Um, Third worst offense in baseball so far this year. What happened to Beltre? Is he not in your projected lineup? He is not. Okay, he exited yesterday. Man. Um, so that's not great. Like, I he was one of the guys I wanted to target. I was wondering. I was like, there. I knew there was another bat in here that I wanted, but. Um, aggravated an injury so that's a little bit of a downgrade for the rangers stack but i still like gallo and mazara and chu and even profar yeah yeah i, I, I won't be there <laughs> i'll have essentially nothing here okay finally giants and reds giants 4.1 run implied total reds 3.9 it's a 53% chance to win for the Giants. Ty Block going for San, San Francisco. Tyler Molly going for Cincinnati. Uh, another scenario where I'm not playing either pitcher. I might have a line or two of Molly on FanDuel, um, but his price on DraftKings is just bonkers. Not happening at 9,000. Um, and I don't have any of the hitting in this game, so this is this game's basically uh, not even on the board for me. Yep, it's just Eugenio Suarez for me against a soft tossing tie block. Uh, I think he's got a pretty good chance to hit a home run, as good as anyone does in in AT and T. But uh, so I like Suarez a lot for 4,400 on DK, and then outside of that, pretty much nothing to talk about in this game. So I'm with you. Yeah. Um. So I ran my crunches earlier. Uh, we'll take a look at DK first. Uh, give me your two pitchers that you want me to look at. Um, <clears throat> try try Cole and Darvish. I want to see. Nah, so do I. I know two lines. Those, yeah, those are the two. Uh, Phillies and Diamondbacks. You there you know? go. Those are two of your favorites. Yeah, I'd be very happy with that. Uh, although, you know, it's you're getting like the ass end of the Phillies stack. You get all there and Hoskins, which is great, but you got to bring along Alfaro and you know, like I don't mind having Kingery, but it's not something I want to go nuts for. This other one here is Cardinals and Diamondbacks, which I would be more than okay with. Um, I like this. I would. It makes me really want to see uh, Syndergaard and Darvish. Oh, 19 lines. Like, yeah, this is going to be my most popular DK setup. Get to Indians and Phillies uh, with, like, the good parts of everything. 
Uh, yeah. Darvish and Syndergaard would be my popular or my favorite combo on uh, on DraftKings tonight. Is there anybody you want me to look at for you? Syndergaard um, and <clears throat> Barrios or something. Probably? Well, that's going to be like the same like price range. So, man, like those are the guys that I like are Syndergaard and um, Pavetta and and Barrios. So, like it's going to be similar when you put Syndergaard with any of those guys because they're all price right next to each other that is probably a true statement <laughs> we'll look at Syndergaard and Berrios there are actually no combinations of Syndergaard and Berrios in the 100 that I ran so oh that's because Berrios doesn't come up for you right uh, and he was in 11 of the 100 oh weird yeah um that first <clears throat> one's not shabby Diamondbacks and Indians Syndergaard oh and yeah I'm a big fan of that and it's got Gomes um yeah, I like that. Twins. Uh, I, I think I'm going to end up with a bunch of twins tonight. Um, just looking at some of those lineups. I, I like that. Where's the first twins line with Barrios? Do I have one? You had you had one. I don't know where it went. There's one. Was- so it's Mauer, Dozier, Kepler, mm-hmm. Garver with Rendon, Turner, <clears throat> Harper, Kendrick. There was one with like a full... It was... Twins and someone, I can't remember. Twins Yankees here. Twins Yankees, yeah. That's nice. Yeah, Mauer, Dozier, Idrizana, and Kepler, Judge, Stanton, Andahar, and Sanchez. <laughs> That's nice. It's always good to know what you can get to. That's, I love this yeah. little exercise. Especially on DraftKings, where like the second pitcher <laughs> makes all the pieces fit together significantly yep. different. Um, so my priority on FanDuel would be looking at Darvish first. Uh, I like Syndergaard more, but I think that Darvish provides the more interesting value. And just to get an idea of like what you can actually have as a part of that, um, you know, any part of an Indian stack that looks phenomenal uh, will be fine. You can get all the best parts of the Diamondbacks. Um, I wish this Philly game would pop off because I would have a lot of like Phillies Indians uh, amalgamations here. Uh, I love Darvish. I just I can't get enough. Something like this, uh, Darvish, Rizzo. Well, Darvish, then Rizzo, Bryant, Zobrist from the Cubs. Uh, Diamondback stack plus Trey Turner. Like That's the sort of stuff that I'm really happy about getting. Man, I'm really excited to play now tonight. i got to figure out what I'm doing for dinner so that I can still functionally be around for lock. <laughs> we we got to make this Darvish versus Barrios bet happen. So. Okay. Rack your brain. I'm in for whatever terms you want to put together, as long as it's not something really weird like shaving our heads or something. <laughs> Although no. I would probably do that too. You just McCullough's that mustache. Yeah. yeah, I would do that too. You got to clear that sort of stuff. Anything that makes me look like an uglier person, you got to clear that shit with my wife. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> uh, she'll probably just be like, you know, I don't want to look at him for like four or five weeks anyway. So we'll do what we need to do. Uh, any hockey tonight that you need to plug? Yeah, game three of um, Lightning and Capitals. So it's going back to Washington. The Capitals lead 2-0. They took both on the road, which was very surprising. The stat geeks like myself that do all these advanced analytic stuff for NHL um, look really stupid right now because Tampa Bay was a huge favorite at even strength, and they got pummeled both games. So... Should be another interesting game. Pretty much must win for Tampa. Um, I'm excited. Like I'll have a showdown article out. Um, if you read my showdown article yesterday and and played some of the plays from there, you probably cashed in. So there you go. Uh, yeah, looking forward to another great night of hockey. We've got Cavs Celtics game two tonight. In the NBA, we've got the NBA draft lottery, which is really the main event of everything today. Uh, That'll be, I mean, one of the more highly anticipated draft lotteries in a long time with the way things can break for the Cavs, the Celtics, the Sixers. Um, You know, it's weird that Cleveland could, in theory, you know, Cleveland's in the Eastern Conference Finals, could theoretically walk away with the first pick in the draft. Uh, (laughs) Boston, I feel like they can only get the second pick, but I might be thinking of it in reverse. One of Philly or Boston, you know, could have the first pick. I mean, I just want to make sure that I have the order right. Not that anybody gives a shit about this, but 
today is a big day. Okay, oh. so... Yeah, the Sixers would get the Lakers pick if it went to one, which is crazy. Boston gets it if it's second or third. Philly gets it the rest of the way. You know, lots of really, really weird scenarios there. Um, I definitely want to see the Cavs win the lottery again. It would be hilarious. They and won it like three out of four years, right? A few did. years back. Yeah, and <clears throat> the craziest part of it all is the year that they didn't win it was... They got LeBron? No. Uh, it was the year of, I think, Anthony Davis, so it would have been the Pelicans <laughs> or the Hornets at the time. Um, so they had the same lottery odds uh, going into it. And when the teams are tied, they do a coin flip to separate them. Um, so each team gets the same amount of ping pong yeah. balls. But that just works for slotting. If nobody jumps into the top three, the team that wins the coin tosses will be first. The Cavs lost that coin toss, but like that that slot itself, like if they would have won the coin toss, they would have won that lottery too. <laughs> <laughs> Which is just crazy. It's absolutely nuts. Yeah. Anyway, draft tonight, and then tomorrow we've got another playline contest to plug. So go to playline.com slash r slash awesomeo if you haven't signed up. If you sign up through that link, um, you know you get a free five dollars and uh, a deposit bonus. We've got the Osmo.com presents the million dollar perfect line, thirty six hundred dollar guaranteed, uh, the big shot. It's a thousand to first. Uh, got to pick the line of Harden, Draymond Green, Steph Curry. Uh, you know the the Osmo.com staff will be a part of that tournament. We don't have anything going on right now. Uh, in addition to that, at least nothing that I have seen, but. Get in that, um, you know, come play against us. Uh, I'm coming for everyone in this one. I have a sneaky suspicion that I'm going to do very, very well here. Uh, I just I feel it. For some reason, I feel it. Um, so check that out. I'll have an article up uh, probably projecting Draymond Green's line uh, later today. So check that out as well. Sweet. Looking forward to it. Yeah, that's everything. Um Chris and Jake will be on the uh, the live stream tonight. I'll try to pop into the chat a little wow. bit throughout it. And um, you know, best of luck to everybody. Do you have anything else you want to add? Go Jose Barrios. Go you, Darvish. But if not, but if it goes wrong, I hope the Braves kick it, kick uh, Darvish's ass because I won't I won't mind losing that bet then. There you go. Alrighty, adios everybody. Good luck tonight. <laughs>